All right, well, I've got a 1932 Chevy Coupe here, and I'm going to be welding in a steel roof insert. So there's a couple different ways to tackle this job, but I'll show you the way that I'm going to do it. So before I get too carried away, I'm going to go around the perimeter of this roof and repair any damage. See, we've got a lot of dings and dents. So you wanna repair all that before you start cutting anything out and doing any welding. Also got this lead seam at the front here, um, which I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with yet, but you can see it's starting to bubble, so we'll have to address that. And just make sure everything's uh, straight and square. And then uh, we can start thinking about filling in this roof. Okay, well, sometimes it can be kind of hard to see all the damage. So what I've done here is I took a Vixen file and just loosely went across all the way around the roof. And uh, see shiny areas are high spots. And then these dull areas are, are low spots. So see fairly decent dent outlined here. And it's similar situation all the way around the roof. Pretty harsh high spots right here, as evidenced by how shiny this is. And then just another decent high spot here. Back the roof isn't too bad. We've got some issues here. Looks like somebody tried to repair a dent with a Pick hammer. So I'm just gonna go work my way around the roof now and uh, get this all ironed out. And yeah, got all the damage roughed out on this roof. It's not necessary at this point to get it perfectly metal finished. You just wanna get rid of all the, the major dings and dents in the weld area, any stress, anything like that. Um, and we're going to be doing a ton of welding along here. So not totally necessary to get it absolutely perfect. But if there is any stress or damage, uh, as soon as you start trying to weld to it, it's going to want to pull the roof skin one way or the other. I'm also Gonna weld this or melt out this lead here. Um, not too sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but we'll see. I've got a brace on the inside that's gonna make things interesting. I have a whole lot of access there. We'll see how we handle that. But now we've got that done. The next step is I made some cardboard templates of the front, rear, and side profiles of the roof. So, uh, so yeah, kind of templated the roof, made sure it's the same on both sides, and then what I did is I took these templates out to a junkyard, and I found a roof with very similar profiles. Um, you want to find something from 50s, 60s, early 70s. Um, a lot of the newer cars, um, the metal's too thin to try and weld to. So, yeah, this this roof's off 66 Chevelle. It's pretty close to what I need. Um, so I'm gonna use it. So now we got that sorted out. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna cut this tack strip out. Just basically right as close as I can get it to the outside of the roof without getting into the tacks. And uh, yeah, we'll get that out of the way. Okay, well, I got the tack strip cut out. Uh, the lead melted out of the front of the roof there. And now I've got the roof tossed on for a quick test fit. So what I did before I cut the roof out of this... Uh, Chevelle is I marked 
center line front and back and I also marked the center line of the roof on the 32 so that when I put it on the crown is going to be centered and then uh, I basically left myself quite a bit of material here so I slid the roof back and forth until I found a spot where it lays down nice and flat all the way around without having to be clamped. So what I'm going to do now is I'll cut off all this excess material, leave myself about an inch to an inch and a half and then I'll set the surf on again and then I can start uh, trimming it for the final fit. Got the roof set back on again and then what I did is held it in place with a few sheet metal screws and then I went on the inside and I scribed the line all the way around so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut directly to this line except for a screwed it on I'm gonna leave a little bit of material there and uh, when we come back I'll show you why I'm doing that well here's the reason for leaving these tabs on I'm gonna be butt welding this roof so what I did is I just left these little tabs and then I hammered a little step into them so that the roof will sit flush and then when I set the roof back in, it uh, doesn't fall into the hole and I don't have to use a whole bunch of clamps. So use a flanging tool for this, but I'm kind of an idiot and left my screw holes too far out to get the flanging tool in. So I just used a hammer and dolly and just hammered this in. And then I'll go around, tack weld the roof. And then once it's tacked in, I can slice these off and then hammer it flat and uh, weld it in flush. With everything else so that worked out fairly well now we can start getting this thing tacked in and uh, hopefully it goes well pretty happy with how this Chevelle roof is fitting in this thing saves me a lot of time because my English wheel isn't all that great Well, the roof is tack welded in and uh, I shouldn't have said that this was going well because there's about five hours of work just to get it tack welded in. It uh, wanted to walk around on me pretty bad which means it's going to be a battle to try and weld it. But it's better to uh, correct any issues now rather than leave it until it's all welded solid. So I'm going to be TIG welding this. In theory, you could also put this in with a MIG welder, but you'd have to only weld about a half inch at a time and let it cool. Um, I'm going to be welding a few inches at a time, letting it cool, hammer and dolling it. And uh, I find with the TIG it's just a lot easier to work the metal as issues arise.
Okay, well that's about half an hour of welding so far. So you can see what I'm doing is I kind of started in the middle and then let, let that cool, ground, ground it down, planished it with hammer and dolly, and then welded the next section. And then kept working my way back and forth. And by the time you get out here and here, you can uh, planish this, weld it while this weld is cooling. And then by the time you're done doing that, you can come back, planish this out, grind it, weld it, and it just makes it faster to keep skipping back and forth. But hopefully that gives you an idea. You can see this part was just welded and it's got quite a dip to it. So I'll planish that back out. It should bring it back up. Some people like to uh, planish while the weld is still proud. I like to knock it off with a grinder. I just find it's a little easier. I also like to let the weld cool before I planish it. Um, that way I don't run the risk of overstretching the metal. It's a lot easier to stretch metal than shrink it. So I'll continue on here and uh, yeah. Okay, well I managed to get this roof all welded in without completely ruining it. So right now, all the welds are just kind of roughly knocked out. And uh, at this stage, if you were smart, uh, you probably just go straight to, straight to body filler and uh, be good to go. It's really nothing wrong with any of this but uh, because I have uh, an abundance of time on my hands I'm gonna waste some of it and we're gonna kind of get this thing smoothed out a little better it's hard to tell on camera but there's still a lot of wrinkles and stuff in this so uh, yeah um, you can see I've already started smoothing out the back so that's kind of what we're going for. And this is where we're at. So uh, what I was doing when I was welding this is I'd weld a couple inch section at a time and then I would use the hammer on dolly technique or the slapper to uh, planish the welds which uh, stretches them back into shape every time something is welded it uh, shrinks slightly so uh, I found that just kind of helped to keep keep the distortion under control because every time I welded it would pucker a pretty big section of roof and all I did hammer on dolly in that area and then it would bring the whole thing back up so in the past I have done long weld seams like basically the whole thing in one shot and just let it warp and then hammered it out later but with these little crown panels I find it's easier to do a little bit at a time and then you can actually tell you know where it's it's been warping and 
it's a lot easier to control and otherwise if this whole thing just sinks in and makes a big mess it's pretty pretty daunting so so basically what I'm doing to uh, smooth out this weld is I'll start run a vixen file across them and that'll reveal all my highs and lows and then from there we'll go to some hammer and dolly and slapper action uh, once it's reasonably smooth move on to it's called a bullseye pick basically it just brings up your low spots your minor low spots and then you can run across it with the vixen file to smooth it all out so these are really handy if you <coughs> do this kind of work at all so I'll try to get some of this on film and then we'll come back when it's all done and hopefully I haven't uh, destroyed this roof Well, this is about as far as I'm going to take it. Everything's all welded in. Got my weld seams and this area of the roof all smoothed out the best that I can. Still needs the usual body work, but uh, really uh, can't be too upset with how this came out.
really glad I decided to use that Chevelle roof. That worked out really well. Fit nicely and saved me a lot of time on the English wheel. So this roof still needs some work along here, obviously. But there is wood still on the inside. And I'm not too sure how far the owner wants to take this. So I just focused on getting the roof straightened out where it was welded and uh, we'll call it quits there.